Watch the mirror. Uh-uh, let's see if we can pull the plug and go from there. See that chip on that edge yeah. of that piston? That has a nice size chip there. It done again. Just the easy tap. No, no, no. Tap. 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 It's like you got a club there, man. Watch the mirror. Yeah, I thought you were just asking to ask. I didn't know there was a point behind that. But all right, now I'm glad everybody's cool. Hey everybody, Pete Iron City Garage. This is our newest project here for this episode. We got a 56 GMC. This is a 150, so it's a three-quarter ton long bed but it's an amazing patina, chrome front end, big back window truck, very highly sought after among hot rodders. They will cut the beds down on these, turn them into short beds, LS swap them, whatever, especially when they have this kind of amazing color. So we're gonna walk around this truck, show it to you a bit. This did come out of the Nebraska truck hoard. This was at the top of my list to bring home and I was able to get it. Hydromatic V8, we'll show you under the hood first. I'm getting ahead of myself. So we might get this one running, we might not. It's stuck by hand. That doesn't really mean anything. So this will be either a 288 or a 346 Pontiac motor, I believe. It does say GMC on it, but I believe this should have a Pontiac V8 and it's just labeled as a GMC. But I did hear the GMC sometimes put the V8s in these. Not sure. All of the ones, and that was recently I heard that, all of the GMC pickups I've ever had had Pontiac engines in them. So. Hydromatic, so it's going to be automatic transmission. Really nice interior. Floors are pretty solid. I'd say they're like 90%. We'll see what it's like once I get everything pulled out, cleaned up, but all intact except the radio. Um, I think I have a radio. Heater's still in it. Um, gauges are all still in it. Uh, it doesn't have any major rust above the windshield. No, no rust above the windshield on the outside. A couple little pinholes on the inside, but when the color is this good, nobody really cares because you can't get them with this much paint left on them. And this color is just awesome. So tailgate the match, which is a huge deal, and it's the correct tailgate. It's definitely the original tailgate on the truck. Looks like she came out of South Dakota. Got one big dent we're gonna fix. This weird like mantel piece. Uh, I believe this was a this is an extremely educated guess because my dad's an antique dealer and all I did my whole life was move stuff like this, but I believe this is the top to a display case. Uh, this was laid on the front seat. That's all I all the information I have on that. So one piece of trim missing up here. I think I have it, but real solid steps. Uh, this one here needs a cab corner. Again, not a big deal. The hot rodders are used to doing that. So just awesome color. Really excited about this one. So we're going to get this one in the shop and uh, start tinkering with it, seeing if we can't get it running. If not, we'll get it cleaned up. This one already has a title, I believe. So we shouldn't have to wait too long on it. We should have this one turned out and ready to go pretty quick. Three weeks later.
Sweet. Don't know if the motor's locked up. Clay's about to find out. And then it'll get the normal. This one I think has four roller tires on it already. I think we just gotta air them up, get it all cleaned up, polish the bright work, and get it out for sale if we can't get it running. But hopefully this thing becomes unstuck, if it is stuck, and uh, we can get it going. I can't turn it by hand. That doesn't really mean anything. When you can't turn it on, on the, turn it on the flywheel, then, then you get a problem. So we'll see. Clay's gonna dive in. <coughs> Getting everything kind of situated and seeing what's what with it. Did you clean the motor on the other one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I sprayed it down. And Yeah, I'm gonna pull that wheel off and work that.
moment of truth. It's about two if you have it, okay? All right. Thank you. I don't think we got luck on this one either, man. Uh -uh. Let's see if we can pull the plugs and go from there. That sucks. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, we might be in luck though. Same process as the other one. No. Not at all. Okay. Yeah, I wanna <clears throat> pull the plugs and see what we got going on here. Oh, look, his truck was green. Repaid. Yeah. Dark green. Well, these Pontiac engines, they were always good. What's it look like under this cap here, underneath the, the, you know? Like sometimes that'll tell you a lot. It's Pretty ru rusty. Rusty, yeah. Looks like it got some water in it. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, well, guess we'll just have to see what yeah. these plugs are like and what the cylinders are yeah. like. Give it a chance. Yeah, I'm hoping that it ain't a dud like the other. Ooh. That one's tight. To get down in here and work. left side's good though? Yeah, this side looks really nice. Water, it's going to be in this side over here. You know, from what these look like and stuff, that's
This one's blown up, I think. See how that, <clears throat> see how that push the hole inside of the plug down in? It, that's a sign of a wrist pin or a connecting rod letting loose and the piston hitting the spark plug. You can see the comparison. We could get down back down bottom and see if the flywheel will turn without no spark plugs and no compression will be made. Uh -huh. It's light and see if maybe uh, <clears throat> you could see in that cylinder. I think we got a working piston. I can't quite tell yet. He has that camera, doesn't he? Yeah, he has a camera. To find it. I want to check this other side too, but I know it's the problem is going to be on this side. This cylinder here, that piston looks like it's not in very good shape. Shape? It looks in really good shape. Maybe you could get this camera with that camera, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm probably about to do. I want to see if it's in first. It's a hornet. There's a dead bee in there. <laughs> That's in pretty good shape. I'm gonna check them all in there. That's in pretty good shape too. That one's in good shape. It's in real nice shape too. We might be good on this one. I think we got lucky. That's a pretty nice shape, that piston. Where's the hole at? See that chip on that edge mm -hmm. of that piston? That has a nice size chip there. We got a weak cylinder. If they do start moving, this is going to be a problem. That's probably going to be an issue with compression on this one. If it wasn't right on the edge and it was like towards the center or something, that's in good shape. That's in nice shape too. So, we're going to put some oil on them and see if we can't get them moving. So what, it's the second one in? Yes. Back the other way, so. No windows. See what's going on outside the world. Oh, it's really tight, but she is moving some. I think once it soaks for a little bit, it's going to move. Oh yeah, it's turning. So, 
That's good. It is turning. I'm going to spray some more and get some more oil in there. Let it soak up and oil away. Kind of ruined the floor in this one. That's the old cigarette lighter. There was some one lady. She was, I guess, I don't know what the hell she was. She was some sort of mathematician. Yeah, it makes a. It makes a good film, and I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah.
That's pretty nice. Now these rockers look good. This one's this is gonna be okay. Hopefully. Yeah, I'm hoping right. we don't have any rocker movement though. We got one froze right here. Oh yeah, it looks like the push rod's filled with rust, don't it? Yeah. yeah. Maybe um, get some penetrating oil in that because you could see around it some. It might start moving for us. No, take it off. Take, take it, it off. off, buff the push rod, buff the rock arm on the wire wheel and put it back together. Try and suck that dry rust out of there too. Yeah. Get the shop back. Yeah, use a shop vac so it doesn't go down in there. Okay. Something's, look here. See this, this one here? I mean, probably not. Look at this one here, it's up higher. Yes. These studs are pressed in. This this stud may be pulled. Where's your button? Right here. I kind of got a loop. No, it's good. Is that like a replacement maybe or something? Yeah, something's different about these. It's all right though, they're, they're pretty much all. Yeah, this stuff here, scrape it and vacuum it so it doesn't okay. get down in there. Should, this one take- Should I do the same thing with the other side? Yeah, grab, yeah. A, grab a shitty rag and shove it down in where the oil returns. Yep. And then you can shop back it out. Yeah, and, and try to vacuum out this center of this uh, manifold too. Okay. Okay. I got it moving, so. Yeah, I'm gonna pull this valve cover off too and yeah. check all the rockers. And this side's pretty nasty looking, so. I got it moving around nice now, so. It's just this one's froze up. I think it's the push oh, one. Oh, yeah, this is a different battery. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so now. Did she crank? I yeah. mean, did she flip? Yep. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Hey, you close to home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Getting there. <laughs> Push rod stuck. Oh, you didn't get the rocker off yet. I hope it didn't bend that valve, the piston. Yeah, I'm hoping for the same thing, you know. I, I because they it. are interference engines. Yep. And it's done right now, it's done, so. Hey, there's a, there's gonna be a guy coming down from Bobcat. He's gonna drive the machine to give me a price on buying it because I might trade it in. So, if you okay. see a Bobcat guy hop on our machine, he's fine. Okay. He well, I don't think we got a bent valve, so that's good. Because yeah. the spring came back up and it didn't stay. We're, we're hoping it didn't bend the valve, Pete. I don't think we got a bent one because uh, from what I just seen, that released back up this valve spring okay so that that's not push wrong just came back, up yeah it yep. came back up so cool. i'm thinking we might be okay that's good just keep backing away you can delete the right
clean all this stuff up. We had a big dust storm here last week, huh? Yeah. What kind of uh, rock or uh, ball does that have on the bottom of it? They're the same end on both sides of these. They're just uh, like a straight. No, I meant the uh, pivot, the rocker arm itself. Oh. What does it pivot on? It just has. Okay, make sure that's free. Okay. Yes, it is. Okay. I'll we'll get some stuff behind that. Too. Now, how are the adjustments on these? Well, you if, you would have, if, if you paid attention when you took it off, yes, you could put it down to where it was. See, there, like, there's like one thread showing here. Yeah. I happened to look, and that's the same way this one was. Okay. So that's just... a good initial adjustment. Okay. But the, but the correct adjustment on these is one turn after zero when the lifter is pumped up and the cylinder is on top dead center so um you you would have to bring the piston up on compression and that's the way you would adjust it you know with the lifter you would you would have to make sure the lifter is pumped up which we we don't know so i'd just put it back right just where like it was. yeah just like where this one is yeah that's a good place to start now if they rattle then you know we'll get into it a little bit deeper now here's a good way to tell before you tighten that down mm -hmm. like, it's pretty obvious that that's that's up that's yes okay and that is uh, an exhaust which doesn't make so any if difference I make it go all the way down and adjust it like that that should be well, it really don't matter. Well, it does because you you want to be on the heel, the the furthest away from the lift part of the cam as you you can be to make a good adjustment. Uh, so like, you you, yeah, you, that's why you always want to be top dead center. No, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead, make it make it go. Let's see if it goes down. That one's down now. Yeah, okay, that's the intake. Okay, this should be down, but it's not. Try tapping that with a hammer, see if it goes down. Did it move? No. It's going down with this. It's still not. It's just snug, barely. Yeah, you don't want to push that down and then have the piston come up and bend it. You know? Yeah. So I should bump it a little bit. It's like that cam's not um, hitting right there or something. Well, it has to. This this lifter is stuck up in the air for some reason. Go ahead, bump it around again. Yeah, see, that's still that's still stuck. We need to tap that down and get that working. Don't no, don't use your ratchet. Leave it where it's at. Well, I was gonna take it. Yeah, off, just leave maybe. it where it's at. That's good. Maybe jar it with a hammer a couple times. Yeah, huh? yeah, that's what I said. See if it'll go down. Yep. Okay. Now bring it up. Let's see if we get it working. Maybe here, run run oil on this side of the push rod. So it gets down to the uh, lifter. I've never seen one do that before. Okay, right. bumper on. Okay. 
Okay. All right, hold it. You're gonna do it again. Tap it down again. Just the easy tap. No, no, no. Tap. 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 Look, well, you got a club bear, man. <laughs> Where's your little hammer? Okay, bring it up again. You know, just work it like that till you get okay. it free. There you go. Yeah, it's starting. See, as long as you can push it down by hand, I think it's going to be all right. starting to work. Go ahead, put your nut on there. First, we was burning cars up. <clears throat> my dumb ass put my hand on a hot piece of metal. Ooh. Yeah. That's about it. Just another thread. It's better to leave them loose than it yeah, is. Yeah, that is actually a little bit looser than, yeah, than it is to tighten them up. So actually that We'll be just about dead on on what these yeah, ones are. Yeah, might need another half a turn or so. Yeah, but that's but okay to start. And I'll see if it goes up and down like it should. There she goes. Okay, good. All right, now just for shits and giggles, here's here's the quick compression test. Hold it down in the hole. No compression. Okay, try the next one. Yeah, try the next one. Sometimes the valve sticks you up Sorry. with it a little bit. What you, what you got? 30? 50. Yeah, uh, almost 50. Yeah. Try the next one. It, it ain't gonna run unless it has compression, so. That's a good one, yeah. Maybe if this one went around a couple of times, it could... Yeah, that... Dead. I'll bet you it bent that valve. I'd almost bet on it. Oh, there are valve. Yeah. Well, when the valve was stuck down, the piston came up. It bends the valve just a wee little See, bit. this one mm -hmm. only got like 15. But then we start getting compression on these two, so yeah, I think we got two dead yeah, ones. It, it might come up. Check the other side. Pressure in all these cylinders. Good. Good. Just the one. Just this cylinder right here. You know what you could try doing is backing that off about a turn. The jam nut underneath there. Yeah. Let that, you know, maybe let the lifter relax a little bit. One of the ways to tell you have a valve issue, if this valve is bent, yes. 
this valve is going to be lower than the other, okay? Because the bent valve will keep it done in the cylinder more. So, if you ever want to check ahead quickly, you can go across your valves like this. They all should be even, providing the valve job was done correctly. This looks good. So maybe we don't have a bent valve. I'd loosen this. Okay. Give it some play. Alright, now yeah. give me the compression gauge. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, after every one. Yeah, yeah make sure that that's released. Okay. Right? Okay. Yep. Look at that. Okay. Still so it's come it's coming to life. Whoops, I dropped that down there. I'll get it. Okay. So now we're doing good. Uh while you got the vacuum cleaner here, all this crap under this manifold. Yeah, I was gonna see if there's like another smaller attachment for this one. Okay, or just get a piece of hose or a pipe. Tape two. And then yeah, well I just wrap a rag around it, hold it, you know. Uh you could take this off. Now, one of the other things that you want to try to remember what affects compression is the fact that when that piston's going down, it needs to draw a full volume of air in. Yes. So if the intake valve is an opening or the butterflies are closed on the carburetor or the choke's closed, you're not going to get a high reading because you're not drawing a full yes. mouthful of air in before you compress it. So I'll always try to take that in consideration. When you're doing a compression test, you should wire the throttle open, wire the choke open if it's an automatic choke. That's the way you want to do a compression test with that engine normally aspirating yes. the way it should. Well, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah, we are. But this, get rid of this. Okay. Make sure that, that now we do have new choke cables, okay? Uh, I always try to free up the original because the new choke cables are really cheapies. Yeah, they and if suck. anything's sticking when you push it in, the, the housing comes out of the knob and, and it doesn't work anymore. So, we'll grab a pair of pliers. Yeah, yeah, I know we're going to have to do something with the carburetor, so, and like I said, let's get this fuel line disconnected. Now, okay. get a pan ready in case you disconnect that and the old fuel from the tank keeps running out of that hose. This one? No, that goes to the uh, carb, the other one. Yeah. Okay, so get a pan, just be prepared. Yep. Yeah, I've been trying to like kind of like reorganize like stuff to like kind of like where I know where it's at, but not change it too much, you know. <clears throat> I'll get to it all slowly, you know.
fuel pump and okay. the ignition system. I, I kind of like to do them both together if we need it. And I wonder I'll, what the points look like. Well, the first thing we'll do is test it for spark. If it has spark, then we don't have to mess with them. Some of them do, you know, some yeah. of them just, they... Some of them, it just depends where it's sat and moisture got to it. Yeah. Well, a lot of times I pull them apart, it's all like green under the cap and whatnot. You know how it is. Just take them lightly. Should do for those for now. Oh boy. Alright, where you at? Put the valve covers back on. Okay. Should I uh, pull that cap off and no, we're gonna check before you pull the cap, we'll check it for spark. So okay. pull the coil wire out of the cap. And, uh, yeah, a little corrosion there doesn't hurt anything. You know that that's going to jump that no matter what. Find a place to uh, to make sure that it's you know going to jump. I just usually set it up so that it yeah tuck it under something. Now I do have a spark checker, but it works better on the plug side. But I never check spark on a plug side unless there's an issue. Not that on right now. <clears throat> I don't see no arc. Okay. We'll, we'll see if we got power there. Well, one of the things that you want to watch and check for, first of all, is, is voltage. This fucked up because somebody took my meter. Okay, see we got I say that 10 11 something. Alright. Yeah, we're we're pretty close to the 12. Alright. So we're our resistor's good. So now let's use the, the keys on. So we'll use the button now. Watch your fan. Yes. Who got all the oil on the floor? I did. Uh, well, it started pissing some out of the cylinders, too. It was, yeah, out of the valve covers and cylinders. Yeah. Oh, that'll be smoky. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nothing. <clears throat> now, you see the way this coil's bulged out in the back? Yes. It might be bad. Okay, but first we'll clean the points and see what we got going on in there. Okay, that might be too big. No, we're okay. That's up against this breather. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to turn the key on and see if our coil 
has any response just with a screwdriver. And then we know we just got to clean the points. Yes. Believe in doing anything extra that you don't have to do. Unless it means it's going to be longevity. Yeah. Okay, very now true. we're going to watch our spark. Yeah. See? Okay, so. Our problem's in the points. The problem is in the contact of the points. Okay. So, yep. Yep. Not so, very much of a spark, though. You know, she isn't like cracking. No. Let's move it a little bit further away. See if we can get a louder. Yeah. Crack out of it. Yep. There we go. Okay, so we're good. So all we have to do is clean that surface right there, and maybe give them a little gap. Sixteen thousandths is what they call for. I'll turn the key off. I'll get um. I got uh. I got sandpaper for them. Okay. Oops. Well, I'm pretty sure that we're gonna have one dead cylinder though. But it might come back to life once it starts actually running. Once that cylinder gets hot, now shit soaks in. Are we jumping? Yeah, we're jumping now. I mean. 16 thousandths is the gap. If it's arcing, let's just leave it alone. Yeah, it's arcing. Okay, good. And leave it alone. Put it back. I again. even got brighter than what it was whenever we were jumping it with a screwdriver. That one clip is real close to that I see tube. That. Like that, and that's what reminded me of somebody turning the distributor because that's what usually happens when things get out of whack. It's because somebody turned it. Get out of there, screwdriver. That's one. That's two. Oh, I just see, we're making progress. We, way back when you got a screwdriver here in the manifold, that's that's oh. quarter inch. Now, another thing that happens here, and I know I'm dumping a lot on you, but the critters crawl up the exhaust pipes mm -hmm. and build nests in the muffler and pipes. And it'll never start with that back pressure. Yeah. Okay, now here, we're going to put this down here. Now, what we could do here, yep, yeah, that's the way to do it. We can put, we can give this a shot of. Just about anything, WD-40, maybe car carburetor cleaner might be a better choice, but we'll see if this doesn't help. This up. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pour some gas in here. Okay.
Hey, we're working. Did you hear that? Mm-hmm. Yep. I think you're blowing out down here somewhere. Are we? Yes, sir. Okay. That's the... Okay, that's the that's pressure fine. line. Yeah, let's replace yeah. that. Okay. Okay. I'll take care of that. Yep. I think we're going to have something working here. I'm just going to tuck this under this hinge for now. All right? Okay. Don't close the lid. Yeah, that hose is all cracked up. Yep. Put a, put a new one on there. Yeah, you don't want to, you know, it's another thing, it's like a judgment call. You don't want to spend a, a whole day messing with a fuel pump that's never going to work, you know. Exactly. You better dedicate like an hour to something like that, you know. Not a whole day. We need five sixteenths. That's what it's looking like. Slag that he puts down in that yard. That's horrible. Yeah, that's up across the street. Yeah. Big. It's okay, it ain't gonna keep us from starting it. Yeah. The pipe slid down in the hole. Yeah. I think I got that pair of needle nose there or something. He's on. It's, yeah, give me a primer. Yeah. There we go. Possibly be across wire. Yep. Okay, let's uh let's shut the key off and check the firing order. <clears throat> I put it along the same way that they have them, so they very very well could be crossed. Alright, so how are we gonna do this now? Do we want to be sure that that's a problem? I kinda wanna be sure. Well, the only way we can be sure is to take the cap off and bring it around to number one and uh, see where where the points open, you know, yeah. before we go chiseling stuff. Yep. I'll get that to fall, fall for there again. And yeah. Wait, don't 
down to the where's number one on the cap. This one right here. Yes. Okay. Yep. Alright, so we got a pretty good idea where the rotor should be, so lift it off of there. This is gonna be inaccurate as hell, I don't think. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna bump it around. Okay. This could be the problem right here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try flushing it with okay. some uh, like brake wash. Now, do you remember I showed you this? This black carburetor? Yeah. I told you that's an issue? Yeah, you that's said what that, that black that's stuff is. You said it was backfiring. So this is an old issue we're dealing with right now. That could have been why they parked this truck. Maybe. I don't know. He likes it, so. Then there's the other thing that I can't stand. This is the stupid talk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is the way you fucking do it. Yes. Whenever he gets goes in depth about it. Aww. What, they empty it? Yep. They didn't even throw a box away. Nope. I go yell at Sam right now. Here's the case of beer. Here's the back of the yeah.
All right, that's it. That's a wrap. We're all done with the 56 GMC big window. Pontiac V8 under the hood. Got it running right. Title came in for it. Awesome patina truck. Take a look. So this is a three quarter ton. It's a 150. So it's a medium bed. It's like a seven foot bed. Big back window, hydromatic V8. Really, really nice truck. Does need a cab corner, but just amazing patina over the whole thing. It's just really hard to get them with this kind of color. If you're a street rod guy, this is what you want. This is what you want for your LS power plant. And as most of you know, they cut the beds down on them. Some people leave them long, but just a really nice all original truck. Original paint, nice floors. Uh, very, very little rust above the windshield to fix. Uh, just uh, overall super nice truck. I love this thing. If I could afford to keep it, I would. This is kind of like dream color combo. Just happy we're finishing up this video on this awesome. We have a beautiful weather here today. It was 22 this morning, but now it's like 45 and sunny, so it's awesome. Um, this truck here is going to be ready to go. It's on the website already. We're asking 17.5. I'm a motivated seller, as they say. So if you're interested in this truck, give me a ring 412 335 6100. Make me an offer. You tell me what you think it's worth. Maybe we can get together, put a deal together. We also have the other one over there, the 55. Uh, same truck. It's a half ton big window. It's a long bed. Just different axles underneath that one. So hope you liked our video. Stay tuned for the next one. We'll be putting out a video every week. Check out the shorts. Check out the Instagram. Check out the website, ironcitygarage.com. Uh, we got t-shirts and hoodies for sale on the website. $15 t-shirts, $30 hoodies, new keychains, and lots of cool stuff on there. Uh, and if you're on Instagram, you'll never miss what we're doing on YouTube either. So that's it. See you on the next one. Hey, thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have cars like these in your garage, if you have a fastback Mustang or convertible Impala, a nice original paint pickup truck or an old cab over truck, and you want to sell it, I'd love to try and put a deal together with you. You can get a hold of me at 412-335-6100. We pay excellent prices. We pay finder's fees. You know, it's no secret. We do make a little money on the YouTube video, so that allows me to pay, you know, sometimes market value or really good prices for these cars. We'd love to come out and drag it out of your barn. We'd love to film it. We'd love for you to be a part of that whole process. So if you have an original paint or an original old fastback mustang that needs work like these ones i have on my trailer or if you have an old pickup or again a convertible impala cab over truck whether it doesn't matter where you are we buy nationwide here in the united states all the way as far as california i've had stuff new mexico arizona oregon washington high desert stuff we love so or if you're in the east coast and it's a rusty mustang or a rusty convertible impala that is fine we typically don't buy many trucks on the east coast but i buy a lot of cars on the east coast if you have cab over parts also especially for these early fords i'd be interested in that it never hurts to send me an email or a text, ironcitygarage at gmail.com. You're welcome to send me an email or a text message, probably the best. You kind of get an instant answer that way. 412-335-6100. I'd love to talk to you. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully we can make a deal on what you guys have on your farms or in your garages.